Super Bowl 56. as it'll be the AFC champion Cleveland Browns taking on the champions from the NFC, the Atlanta Falcons. time in almost 30 years the big game is back in Los Angeles Super Bowl 56 underway Atlanta takes the field their offensive leader of course Matt Ryan the former Boston College Eagle and you know how they say it's not about the money sometimes it is about the money Matt Ryan is going to average 30 million dollars in salary per year now as one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL and he more than deserves it. The NFL's MVP in 2016. Opening carry of the game for Cordero Patterson. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. This Super Bowl, of course, just a huge one for this head coach. The first time he's walked the sidelines in a game of this magnitude and you know, I might normally ask the cliche, what's going through his mind right now? But maybe the better question, CB, what do you think are the pitfalls of being a first-time head coach in this game? Well, you know it's something that he thought about, Brandon, and he had to. And he was thinking about it long before he got to this stage. As the season progressed and he saw that his team was good, if he was smart, he started to make plans right then and there. Reach out to other coaches who've been there before. Find out how they handled winning, losing, handling all the ticket situations, travel, practice, all those things. And then trust your gut, make your best decision, and put it all out there and give your team their best chance to win. On first down, Patterson. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Jadavian Clowney there on the stop. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Brings up second and nine. Now Ryan. He's going to fire this thing deep right sideline. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Well, when you've got a tight end who can run, you've got to give him a shot to unlock the defense. Want to see what they can get taking the big shot downfield. That one winds up incomplete. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. His first catch of this Super Bowl, and it'll be good for a first down. From the shotgun, Ryan. Flush to his right. He'll try and run it. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and then it'll be second down. Six. Brings up second and four. And 
Give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Brings up third down. They run with Patterson. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Play action. Ryan. Eluding the pressure right. Going for it all. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. The intended target was Calvin Ridley. That'll bring up second down. So many times we see teams go on the road and want to lean on their running game. But this crew just announced they're going to try and air it out and make hay downfield. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Yeah, yeah, we dominate. Good. Cordero Patterson had the second fastest play of 2019. He hit 22.23 miles an hour on a touchdown run, and he found a top gear here as well. This will be caught just inside the 10. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Three yards the game there, second down. At the 9-yard line. From the gun, it's Ryan. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Intended target on that one, Russell Gage, and it's third down. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. With the first touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Falcons take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first. An ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator? Oh, yeah. what he told us? Absolutely. With some teams, I script to probe in the early part of the game. Other teams, I script to attack. They've been in attack mode for these ball games and continue that in this one. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Here's the Cleveland offense, and here's Baker Mayfield, former Heisman Trophy winner, ready to go at quarterback. Is it okay if I give him a few props right here? Do you mind? I think he's earned it. Go ahead. Okay, how about a guy who was a two-time walk-on, who later became a two-time Big 12 Player of the Year, has the most touchdown passes in Big 12 history with 129, a Heisman Trophy into his credit, and took his team to the college football playoffs. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. So that time, Charles, a quarterback helpless, really, in the pocket in the face of a pass rush like that. They were on him instantly. Throwing on second and long. Mayfield incomplete. Well, as we get ready for third down, let's go back and recap here. The sack on the first play of this drive, that threw a wrench in what they were trying to accomplish because they were compelled to throw the ball on second down. A running play was not in the works. And that incompletion set up another passing down here on third and long. And it's complete. Hooper. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. How about that? They weather the storm of a third and 17 to pick up the first. That's a 41-yard line. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. Uh, CD, you know, so often we talk about quarterbacks holding on to the ball too long. Well, we can't say that there. He had no time to do much of anything. Throwing on second and long. Mayfield and finding the tight end, Hooper. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. Brings up third and six. From the gun, Mayfield. Oh, he almost picked it. Nearly a turnover there on their opening drive. That's a throw he'd like to have back. Now fourth down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. And a nice 
nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. And they work this out past the 25. That good for 22 and a first down. Okay, every now and then, my defensive bias will leak out here. Abysmal play for them. You've got them backed up, and you let them out. Don't take advantage. And you know who's happy? The punter. Because <laughs> if he was needed, they gave him a lot of space to work with now. Yeah, because he would have had a lot to think about, right? Don't step over the back line and give him a safety. Now he's got room if he needed it. From the 30 on second down, Ryan. And he'll complete this one to Patterson. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back and it could turn into a big game downfield. What a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. They're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, set, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Ryan. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. On second down now, it's Patterson. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Looking deep for Julio. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Greedy Williams picks it off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, I tell you, Brandon, this ball's intercepted, but it is third down. So the silver lining is that since this is so far down the field and there wasn't a big run back associated with it, really this kind of works like a punt. It's not an altogether bad result. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. That's into the hands of Donovan Peoples-Jones. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. Every now and then I can speak from experience because I do know as a defender, it is awfully hard to stay with your man on these crossing routes because even if you don't get picked, there's a danger of being picked either by one of their receivers or maybe by your own defender. And on that play, that worked quite well. It'll be a gain of 24 on the play, and it'll give them a fresh set of downs. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. For Falcon seven, Browns nothing. Mayfield on first down, quickly into the hands of Beckham. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. He's been a one-man wrecking crew these last couple of plays. This time, 18 more and a first down. First down. First down. And yeah, they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And some room to work. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. 11 more on that one and another first down. And the Browns, first down. First and 10 at the 13-yard line. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catching the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. get the yardage, but they hate to see him take that hit. They're always trying to cool off 
a big time guy throwing the ball, but you have to know when to back off, pull up, and not. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Touchdown run. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying this thing up. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. A tale of two extremes already in this game. A touchdown pass on their opening drive, followed by an interception last time out. Now, it sounds like things balance out, right? What's that, that mythological thing that we do? If you have a candy bar, have a diet soda with it, it balances it out. And we know that's not really true, right? Because the interception, that sting lingers a little bit longer. Got to come out now and put together some nice plays. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Three catches for him now in the first half of this Super Bowl. It's a first down. Patterson on the carry. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. But I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. The Falcons on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. Here it's third and two. A shotgun handoff to Patterson. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef eaters on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Well, we got beef eaters licking their chops and tasty dish in one fell swoop. I did apologize in advance, didn't I? Yeah, you did. That line's not eating tofu, I'll tell you that much for free. He's going to have the hook up to Gage and able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. On first down, Ryan. Looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 14 yards there on a Falcon first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Challenged the play, it did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player, you threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the play or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident, and then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. Now a handoff looking right. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. One yard gain brings up second and nine. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Operating from the gun, Ryan escaping the pressure right. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. From 13 yards out, and the Falcons have taken the lead. 
He was able to move around and found some vision to throw the football. And how about how he ended it? Boy, he had some zip on that throw. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to have an arm like that. Results in the touchdown here. Great play offensively. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. Young Way Koo to kick off for Atlanta. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Taken about seven yards deep. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the ball. Uh, we'll see if they can disrupt it here. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Third and one, here's Mayfield. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Four catches already here in this Super Bowl. He's got another first down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Over the middle to back him. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. That certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Landry again, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Mayfield with it once more. And his throw is incomplete. At this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. On third down, Mayfield. And that is incomplete. He certainly had a good game throwing the ball so far, but I think he was trying to take that from good to great with that throw, trying to get one downfield. And here's Gillen on now to punt as he gets this one away. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. Matt Ryan and the Falcon offense set to get going again. And he's looked pretty good. Does have the one interception, but two touchdown passes so far. Your analysis. They'll take the offset. When you're talking about throwing two touchdown passes, no one wants to see an interception thrown. But those things happen in the course of a ball game and over the course of a season. But throwing two touchdown passes, that's why the team has an advantage. That's what they're looking for more of. They'll be hoping to make it a 3-1 to one ratio here in the second quarter. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked by Riley Harrison, and they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. That was a really nice interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing zone. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes and go to the ball. That's exactly what happened on that play. Up from his linebacker spot, Deion Jones making the play. The second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. Brings up second and seven. Coming up in a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. The coach will have stats and scores from earlier today in the NFL. On second and seven. Mayfield letting one go deep for the end zone. And both guys were there, but it falls incomplete. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, 
That worked quite well for the defense. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back in the 29. And the number one mission of any offensive line, you got to protect that quarterback, keep him safe back there. And this time, the rush got to him in a hurry. And this came from the interior of the defensive line. And these guys, they're normally anchors of that spot, and they don't often get clear shots at the quarterback. But in this case, he got past the center and the guard in no time and got there to make the play. And Bailey on for the field goal, a 47-yard attempt. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So a good kick there, and they put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. Be able to knock the ball through the post and take the three. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Yeah. Either not the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And still plenty of time remaining here in the half. More than a minute. And we'll see if they just want to protect that lead or try to add on to it. Well, with as much time as is left on the clock, I would imagine it would be the latter. I think they're going to try and add on to it. So what they're going to tell the team is very simply, if you can get out of bounds after making a play downfield, terrific. If you can't, everyone hustle to the line of scrimmage. Either run another play or clock it and start over again. Caught on the right side by Jones. That catch good for only a couple. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. From the gun, Ryan. And his throw's going to be incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 46. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. And here's Hoff Richter now, the punter, as he sends this one away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Heading back out, Baker Mayfield, as we call up our player spotlight. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And yeah, he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. On first and 10, Mayfield. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Harlan Humphrey on the coverage. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. To throw, Mayfield. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. So these two teams will head to the locker room as we hit halftime in Super Bowl 56. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. What a season this has been. Hard to believe it ends tonight. As we'll get back to you guys for the second half of this Super Bowl in just a moment. It's been a tremendous season of football, but it's not over yet. One half remains to decide who will stand on the podium with the Vince Lombardi Trophy. And to call the second half, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. These two teams sat through a longer-than-usual 30-minute wait, but we're back in action here in this Super Bowl. And the half will begin with a touchback. 
Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Just not much a quarterback can do there, CD. The pressure was in his face almost instantaneously, led to a very quick sack. Yeah, that's one where you turn to your lineman and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely, because remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. Throwing on second and long. Mayfield, he'll get this one underneath to Hunt. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back, but now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. No, oh, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons' offense at the line. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. And how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. He's going to fire this thing deep right side. And got his man complete. And he'll take this to the other side of the field before going out of bounds. That one covers 29 yards. First down. Here's Patterson. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There's absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. Once more, they turn to Patterson. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 11 yards there, first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shot of the 10. A really nice gain of 25 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. That catch good for only a couple. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an intercept. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. A 10-yard touchdown run. And the Falcons push further out in front. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. And he puts it through. So this drive spans seven plays. And it was finished off with a 10-yard touchdown scamper. Touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Taken about seven yards deep, and it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sends it under a heavy run. 
flush, and down he goes. Grady Jarrett, my goodness, make that now five sacks for him in this ball game. Really, really turning in an incredible performance. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Mayfield now. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. His second catch of the Super Bowl, and it's good enough for a first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Again, he's got that man Landry. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Grady Jarrett in there to get him again. That is sack number six, one off the NFL record of seven. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Jarvis Landry, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Brings up third down and 17. Mayfield looks to throw. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. And unable to connect, incomplete. I give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. I know that we've seen their share of struggles, and the quarterback's been hit a few times in this game, but this one can't be put on the offensive line. They gave plenty of time to throw the football, I think, ultimately. He has to be a lot more decisive in his decision-making and get rid of it and find an open target. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet, see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Operating from the gun. Ryan flushed out right. He'll run it. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. And give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Blitz coming, and down he goes. On the corner blitz that time, the sack goes to Denzel Ward. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Throwing on second and long. Ryan, and he gets this one to Ridley complete. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Got a man, it's Patterson complete. 
And he'll get this up near midfield, but that's still a few yards shy of the first down. Five yards, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. The punt team now is this one sent away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Melvin Ingram in there to drop him, and that is the seventh time tonight that he has gone down. One quarter remains here in the Super Bowl. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. The intended receiver was Rashard Higgins. And that'll make it third down. Third down and 16. Mayfield to throw it to the right side, and he's got Landry complete. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? 42-yard punt, six on the return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And they have been the better of the two sides to this point with a two-score lead, fourth quarter of this Super Bowl. And the Lombardi Trophy within reach as they start this drive first and 10. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. And they'll try the jet sweep here. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That's good for a Falcon. An excellent run there coming from out wide. And we used to consider these jet sweeps to be gadget plays or something a little bit unusual, right? But now most teams have some version of this play in their playbook. And I think it's a lot because of the receivers that are being developed nowadays. He this is caught inside the 15. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. Give him 30 yards there. Uh, they load them to sleep there, so to speak. That was all set up by the running game, wasn't it? Another example of what all offensive coordinators tell us. When the running game's operating, it really open. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Cordero Patterson, his second touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Falcons will extend their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Ku able to connect on the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. Following the touchdown, here's Ku to kick off. Taken about seven yards deep. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. And now the Browns coming out on the field. And it's becoming more and more apparent that this is just not going to be their night. That Lombardi trophy so close, but the expectations simply have not matched the results as they start on this drive first and 10. And he's brought down after a very nice game. It'll go as a game of 25 on a play that started back at the 25. First and 10 at the 50-yard line. Mayfield now from the 50. 
And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. They'll go screen here to Hunt. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play call was sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Mayfield able to find Hunt out of the backfield. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. He's got his tight end, David Njoku. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. His first catch of this Super Bowl, and it'll be good for a first down. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Grady Jarrett with the tackle. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Brings up second and nine. Mayfield. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. If they're going to have a shot in this Super Bowl, they're going to need this one on fourth down. Desperation time. Mayfield on fourth down. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. The Browns unable to move the chains on fourth down. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. Well, you feel the excitement build on those fourth down plays. Defense has to stay out there, but for the offense, when that thing doesn't work out, such disappointment. It can absolutely be a deflator, but how about the defensive guys? If they stop you on fourth down, they are absolutely elevated going to their bench. They're elevated now. Big stop on fourth down. The last run got six, now second and four. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. That what a first down pickup of eight. Oh, that's going to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw him through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. Flush to Brian hit, and he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Browns. And he's into the end zone. It's a fumble return for Brown's TD. And what we just saw, very, very rare. We only had five of those in the first 50 Super Bowls. The biggest stage, the biggest game, and we just saw it happen again. Extraordinary. The defense has been good, and they were good again there. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And the lead is down to 11 at 28-17. And a good job here by the Falcons. Their hands team able to recover it. The fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. 
the 20. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Cordero Patterson with his third touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Falcons will add on to their lead. I know I should keep the focus in the spotlight on the hero that just scored, but tackling's been an issue for this defense all game long. I can't set that aside. We just saw it again here. Missed tackles leads to his long touchdown run. Extra point by Kuhn, up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now. Following a touchdown, here's Kuhn to kick off. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. And their Super Bowl hopes are dwindling here in the fourth. That AFC crown from two weeks ago starting to seem like a distant memory. And this one just has not gone as they had hoped. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him, but after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. Throwing again, Mayfield on second and ten. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. the gun Mayfield and he's got his man that's Landry and he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion Mayfield on target to Landry for a Browns first down two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports so the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset and let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over Mayfield completes it to Higgins, and he'll go out near midfield at the 49. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. First down, first and 10 at the 49-yard line. And again, it's Mayfield. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Grady Jarrett in there for the seventh time in this game alone, and that ties him with a late Derek Thomas for the most sacks ever in a single game. Kareem Hunt is running back, the intended receiver. But now it'll be third down. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. He's going to let it fly, and it's knocked away and incomplete. The guard spent a little extra time dissecting the game film after this one. I think the part of their plan was to hit him over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. Mayfield to throw for it on fourth. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is going to be incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that may write a finish to this Super Bowl. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. It's a gain of 16, first down Falcons. This defense, Charles, they have unraveled here in the fourth. In a sense, it's like they're being pressed, like in a basketball game, and they just can't get the ball over half court. I mean, no matter what they do, they can't get off the field. They can't slow them down. They're just going up and down the field against them. Yeah, unraveling would be a perfect word for them. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Oh, look at this. Ryan's going to throw it. And he's got it. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. Well, they certainly have the look of a team with something to prove, don't they? All week, as we prepared for this game, we kept reading about how they said they're going to play a full 60. Oh, and now they're going to fake it. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two. They don't get it. Partner, that type of a lead, and they're going to fake it from the 15 to try and pick up a two-point play instead of kicking it through the post. 
Come on, man. Put that in mothballs. Come on. What? Come on. Don't do that. Put that in mothballs. Yeah, huh? preserve that for it. That's, a, that's an ancient relic. Faking it. You, you, I can understand you. You want to rub it in a little. You fake it when you snapped it from the three. But from the 15, mothball that bad boy. Just like my grandmother had. Yeah, in my, her attic, this my grandmother did the same. It smelled yeah, terrible. Too. <laughs> Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Xavier Rhodes with a pick. And that will write a finish to this. Falcons, Dirty Birds, Woo! Super Bowl champs. Yes, sir. season ends in the most remarkable of ways they get to put next to their name Super Bowl champion and they can't ever take that away can they nope that lasts forever so good to see the emotion when it's all said and done you see the hugs you see the guys sharing the collective happiness makes me want to carry you around a little <laughs> bit on my shoulders to celebrate the triumph and congratulations to them a fantastic season and so are bragging rights for an entire season. And what a season it has been. Feels like we have been there every step of the way. Our entire crew doing a wonderful job. Thanks to my broadcast partner, Charles Davis. For all those guys, I'm Brandon Gunn signing off. We'll talk to you next season right here on EA Sports.